saucy, yeah Conscious is a way of life You can make your next move your best if you play it right I got a few homies, they my bros, they my air lights Yeah yeah, I just wanna see us all win Cause we've been through some shit that could easily make it all end What's good everybody, it's your boy Lig from Conscious Bully Network It's good to see you and it's good to be seen and not viewed Thanks for tuning in to the channel Please consider subscribing to the channel If you're already subscribed to the channel Thanks for revisiting the channel And if not anything else Please smash that like button, you know what I'm saying? Hit that share to let us know that you care. And I'm standing in this room today because I got something on my mind. Anytime that you hear me on video or you see me on video talking some motivational stuff, it's not because I have all the answers. It's not because I'm better than you. It's not because... I'm a lot smarter than you or I'm not smarter than you. It's, it's merely because something that I've been through, okay? That's all it is. It's not because I'm perfect. I'm not perfect, so I don't expect my viewers to be perfect. It's just something that I've been through. Hopefully, it can help you too. Now, what I've been thinking about today is discipline, okay? A lot of times when I make these type of videos, it's kind of sort of like a note to self, okay? That's why you don't see me make these type of videos that often. It's kind of like a note to self. So I might be slacking in something and I make these videos as a note to self because I like to go back and watch my videos. You know, ask my wife. Nobody watches my videos more than me. I'm my biggest fan. However... I'm not doing this for entertainment when you see me just sitting in front of the camera talking. It's not for entertainment. Most of the time, it's a note to self, something to help me get better. I could be encouraging you in a way that I need help with as well, and we can grow together. Now, I woke up this morning with discipline on my mind. I said, man, you haven't been on your push-ups, man. You haven't been eating healthy, man. What's up with you, man? You ain't saving money the way that you said you wanted to save money. You ain't making the money the way that you said you wanted to make it. And we going over into 2024. What is you doing, man? What is you doing? And I'm thinking that I have an addiction, okay? Laziness is an addiction. Procrastination is an addiction. And if anybody want to do better in their life with goals, there's probably some addictions that you're going to have to get rid of. So I had to remind myself, do you remember the last time you was going through something mentally? And what did you do to overcome that situation? So let me take y'all back. Let me rewind a little bit. I remember when I woke up one morning, similar to the way that I woke up this morning, but I was a little more in bad shape back then. You know what I'm saying? I was blessed nonetheless, the same way I'm blessed now, but the situations were totally different, okay? Back then, I was smoking hella marijuana. You know what I'm saying? I was drinking probably more than I'm drinking now. And I had an addiction with sex. So I was like, listen, I had other addictions too. You know what I'm saying? Like blowing my money in the studio, blowing my money doing this, just doing things that wasn't necessarily helping me out financially. So I said, the problem that I need to get rid of is the addiction. You know why? Because the addiction has power over me. And I don't want anything to have power over me. I remember I tried to quit smoking weed and I used to take my weed and throw it in a trash can in the kitchen, right? And I'd be like, man, I'm not smoking that weed no more. I throw that weed in a trash can in the kitchen and I will go to work. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you how strong addiction is. I will be at work the whole time. 
just thinking about getting back home. And when I got back home, I would dig in that dirty trash can in the kitchen with all the leftovers that I ate, things that I didn't eat off my plate that I just scraped in the garbage with along with all the other trash. And I would find that one or two bags of weed because I knew that they were wrapped in plastic and anything inside of that plastic is going to be clean and ready. And I would smoke it. And then it, when I failed at doing that, I just started dumping it down the toilet. And that didn't last any long either. The addiction is so strong because now I feel like I'm wasting my money. Just because I dump it down the toilet wasn't preventing me from buying it. I had an addiction to buying it. So now I'm still buying it and I'm dumping it down the toilet. You know, uh, it's kind of stupid, but I blame it on addiction. Right. Then I realized how, you know, I hope that it's a adults on this channel watching, but I feel like I had an addiction to sex. You know what I'm saying? And with sex, that would have me out looking for women every weekend when I was single. You know what I'm saying? Had me out looking, going to the bars, trying to do this and trying to do that. Sometimes I scored, sometimes I didn't. You know what I mean? But it was always an addiction. And along with that, when I did get the women that I wanted, the drinking came along. It all ties in people, places, and things. You know what I'm saying? So what I did was, is I just chose to take a period of time in my life, which was about one year and three months, where I disciplined myself. I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, or I didn't have sex for one year in about three months. And I told this story to someone before and they said, well, was you locked up? No, man, I wasn't locked up. I was just going to work every day, coming home from work, doing push-ups, and reading the Bible and praying. That's what got me through that one year and three months without drinking, smoking, or having sex. I was already already on the verge of losing my apartment. My sister let me move into her apartment and her apartment had an upstairs, a third floor. She was on the second floor apartment. She let the upstairs be occupied by me. Okay, so I had left my apartment because I probably was on the verge of losing it anyway. And I start staying with my sister in that period of my time in my life. So I would just come home from work go in my room, read the Bible, do push-ups, pray, eat a meal, and go to sleep. Now, I did that, like I said, for about a year and three months, and I'm very proud of that. But, and, and that helped me realize my strengths. It helped me realize how strong I was, not physically, but mentally, okay? Make discipline your addiction it took a whole lot of discipline for me to do that now you got people who've done that two three four times fold triple the amount of time that i did and they might have been locked up you know anything that can help you let it help you you know what i'm saying i'm not saying that's a good thing but i never been locked up i had to figure this thing out on my own and I had to show some discipline. I made discipline my addiction. And this is probably what I need to exercise now because I fell off from that. You know what I'm saying? I fell off from that. So in order for me to get back, I might have to get back to what I did the first time that allowed me to win for that period of time. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully if you're going through something, you have the courage and the strength and the mindset to be able to do it for yourself. Now, we could talk about what brought me back and what made me fall off. That's a whole nother video. But I'm going to tell you this. One thing uh, I learned is if you want to stay strong and you want to stay focused, then you need to stay away from those people, places and things uh, that had you in the mix. Because it doesn't matter 
how much time go by. It could be one year and three months, or it could be five years. It's only a matter of time if you continue to go around those people, places, and things. If they're still doing those things, it's still in you. You just haven't been bringing it out, but it's still in you. And if you keep going around it, it's going to slowly but surely bring you back. I'll make a part two to this video. This video already 10 minutes long. I'll make a part two of this video to let you know how exactly did I fall off? Like if you was doing so good, how did you fall off? You know what I'm saying? A year and three months and then you fell off. I don't want to make this a extensive long video, but if I get the right amount of likes and views on this YouTube video, then it will show me that someone appreciates it and it'll encourage me to be able to tell you how I fell off, okay? And then I'm gonna talk about what we're gonna do to get right back to it, you know what I'm saying? So that's just a little story that I wanted to share with y'all. Make discipline your addiction because that's what you're gonna need in order to fight the war. And what is the war, okay? The war is the wicked and righteous. W-A-R, war, wicked and righteous. It's like you got God on your shoulder, you got the devil on the other shoulder, and they're both talking to you, and mentally you're going through a war. It's a war between the wicked and the righteous. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of people out there going through a war mentally, and um, I just want to share this story with y'all and hopes that all of y'all can find the discipline and be able to make that an addiction. So it's your boy Lib. Until I see you on the next video, I hope this video helped. And remember, conscious is always a way of life. Peace.